want to talk about the uh, what could be a shortage of protein, whether it be beef, pork, poultry. And to do that, let's bring in Colin Woodall. He's the National Cattlemen's Beef Association CEO. And the reason we invited you into Yahoo Finance is on the move, sir, is that we now heard from Costco that they're going to limit the amount of protein sales, meat sales to customers, to just three items of beef, poultry, and pork to, I guess, uh, make sure we don't run out. Can you give us a, a better understanding of what the real picture is for those of us who love beef or might enjoy pork and poultry? So we are seeing some shortages throughout the country right now. A lot of times they are regional in nature. We've also seen an announcement today by Wendy's where they are in some cases limiting the access to burgers in some locations. And that is because of the choke point that we have within our supply chain. We have plenty of cattle. We just need to be able to harvest those cattle and turn them into beef. And we have very few packers that can do that. Those meat packers right now are suffering, however, from the COVID-19 virus affecting their workers. And therefore we have some plants that are shut down, others that have scaled back their production rate in order to try to address the sick workers. And that is what's causing the shortages that we are seeing. Colin, it's Julie here. Thank you for joining us. So. When we do start to see some of these plants open back up, and obviously there needs to be a, a safety first kind of situation here, although I, I believe Tyson is reopening one of its plants right now, how long does it then take for that choke point to kind of open up? How long does the backlog take to make its way through these uh, processing facilities? Now, this could be a backlog of cattle that could take a couple of months to get through. But as we see these packing plants reopen, we're going to see that flow of beef pick up quite quickly. And so we don't expect that these shortages are going to be very long in nature. They may be a matter of days, at the worst, a couple of weeks, but that's also going to be store to store. I believe that you're going to find some cases where a store might have beef today. They may not tomorrow, but they could again on Thursday. That's what we're going to have to work through. But you hit on a key component of this, and that's making sure that these workers are safe. We did have the executive order from the president that invokes the Defense Production Act on the packing plants. That's key to make sure that we can keep them running, but we also have to look out for their safety. And the CDC and OSHA put out a guidance that's going to allow us to do both, to keep the workers safe and continue operations. And that's what we're focused on right now, making sure that these plants can operate, keep these workers safe, because without the workers, we're never going to be able to harvest the cattle and produce the beef. Colin, I'm curious, you mentioned that these shortages uh, or hiccups are more regional. And just over the weekend, I do the shopping. Uh, I was able to get some steaks on sale, actually, at our local supermarket. So where is it most pronounced? Is it the East Coast, the Midwest, the South or the West, the Northwest, where we're seeing it most pronounced? Uh, really, it's it's all over. Uh, I'm in the Denver area, and we've had some locations in Denver where over the weekend you couldn't find any beef. And in some locations, there was all the choices that you could want. So a lot of it depends upon the distribution system of the individual grocery stores and also some of these rolling shutdowns that we have seen of these packing plants. So right now there's not one geography that's being hit any harder than anybody else. It just seems to be in some cases on a store by store basis. Uh, but again, it's something that we do believe that with beef still being produced, uh, that if it's uh, a shortage today, in some cases, that meat case will be full again tomorrow. But we really don't have a, a good way to quantify that yet because it has been so sporadic. And again, we're not talking about a nationwide shortage. It's just a distribution issue and on one hand, and then also these plants that uh, some cases are shut down maybe for just a couple of days and uh, other cases a couple of weeks that are also impacting this. Colin, as restaurants start to open across the country, do you expect that to help with the supply? You know, as we look at our industry, about 40% of what we produce typically goes into food service and restaurants. So without that restaurant business over the past several weeks, it's helped us be able to take care of our retail customers. But as we do see restaurants start to open up, that's going to put an additional strain on our business. But right now, as these restaurants are picking up, we're also seeing these packers find ways to implement the CDC OSHA guidance. So I do believe we'll all be able to recover at the same time. So uh, right now, we don't expect the opening of food service to truly exacerbate this, uh, but only time will tell. 
All right, well, for the record, never met a stake I didn't like. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.